Welcome to you. How difficult has it been to reach this agreement over this directive? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been quite a challenge. I've been involved in this since about uh, 2015. And back in those days, there was basically no framework. I think one of the first to move were the SEC giving some guidelines uh, about 2017, 2018-ish. Um, but then this is obviously a big landmark over on the European side. When you're talking about bringing so many countries together, I know different sort of individual countries have different ways of looking at it. But in, in an industry that is so complex, it's really, really challenging just to make sure that in doing this kind of regulation, you don't, obviously, number one for any regulators protecting uh, people, right? But number two, you have to try not to stifle innovation. So that's a massive challenge for any regulator, but there's a really positive view for uh, well, those in the market that, that put fundamentals first over maybe uh, some of the other practices we've seen over the years. Is this directive going to improve the integrity of, of crypto markets? Yeah, I, I believe a solid fun, sort of regulatory framework is key to, to anybody who really wants to do business in a serious way, right? I know when we sit and we look at doing deals with people, there's, there's still a perception sometimes of crypto cowboys. And, and I mean, we've seen that the ICO market in 2017. We've seen some of the NFT stuff more recently. Lots of sort of bubble looking behavior, people getting very excited and, and kind of getting a bit ahead of themselves. The technology is coming and there's going to be amazing sort of things available, but it takes time. So a solid framework means that you can build companies, you can get proper auditors, legal firms, you can get bank accounts set up with reputable institutes. Right now, I've seen various of our clients or others in market have to go offshore um, or at times look at uh, even just not starting certain things. So this is essential to the market sort of growing up. You just mentioned NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Of course, they've been exempted from the directive. Is that a mistake? So I don't think it's a mistake because of the complexity, right? It's important to get things like stable coins and decentralized finance where a lot of the, the recent pain has been felt right first. However, it, it will be very important to include NFTs because this touches retail so heavily. So in a task that is so complex like this one, I think it's important to sort of draw an industry advisory board as well because it's such a complex task for anybody to kind of deal with. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it needs to come, but of course within 18 months they'll weigh in properly on this. Now, an earlier uh, draft of the uh, legislation effectively would have banned Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies due to the energy intensity of, of mining them. Is that something that you think might come back in future? The great thing we've seen in the innovation in the blockchain space so far is kind of moving away from these models, right? So whilst Bitcoin still remains very energy intensive because of the way it kind of secures itself, which is called proof of work, we see more and more um, blockchains now adopting newer innovations in this, this sort of securing mechanism called proof of stake or, or other ones. So these are much less energy intensive. You see Ethereum, the second biggest in market cap now, adopting a proof of stake mechanism. So I think it's very important that we move away from these energy intensive. I mean, Bitcoin per transaction uses over a thousand kilowatt hours per transaction, which is just not sustainable. But we do have the innovation there and the, the moves have been made by some of the other big players in market who I believe just on this basis will gain significantly more market share in the future.